Hallelujah. So we're going to study Matthew 24 tonight. It's uh, Jesus uh, predicted many things and spoke, said many prophecies in Matthew 24. And we will study something called dual fulfillment prophecy or double fulfillment prophecy. You know, in the Bible, there is this theme of, uh, you know, there are many prophecies about Jesus Christ, but there are some prophecies that has a dual fulfillment or a double fulfillment. One of the fulfillments is a short term, right after the prophecy is spoken. Uh, in a sh not a long time period. In a sh it has a short term fulfillment and a long term fulfillment. That's the dual fulfillment prophecy. One is close and the other is far. One is partially fulfilled and the other is completely and literally fulfilled. There are many examples in scriptures. One of the examples is Joel uh, prophecy, chapter 2, about the Holy Spirit. And it's quoted in Acts chapter 2 when he prophesied uh, that God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And right after it, he says the sun will be darkened, the moon will become like blood, and uh, the, the day of the Lord will come, the, the second coming of Jesus. So we see that this prophecy was partially fulfilled in the day of Pentecost, but it will be fully fulfilled at the second coming of Christ. And another uh, example of this, for example, David, when he spoke about the king that will come after him, right? And sometimes we ask ourselves, was he speaking about Solomon or about another king, a greater king, an everlasting king, a perfect king? So also it's a double fulfill, uh, fulfillment prophecy. He was speaking about uh, Solomon, but the perfect fulfillment of this prophecy is Jesus Christ, the eternal king. Or, or, or Moses, he spoke about somebody who will succeed him, a prophet, but he was speaking about Joshua, but the real prophet that will really come in the place of Moses is Jesus Christ. So also a double fulfillment prophecy. So many other prophecies, if you go and study this, you will see many examples. And one of these examples is Matthew 24. So let's start reading Matthew 24. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to study the whole chapter, but I'm going to stop after I read. After a few, each few verses, I will stop to study it, go deeper into it, and, and uh, uh, see what the Lord is teaching us through it. So Matthew 24, verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Amen. So Jesus was in the temple in Jerusalem. The temple, the second temple, not the first temple, because the first temple was built by Solomon. And then it was destroyed. And the, the Jews went to exile to Babylon. And then they came back and built another temple. That was the second temple. And uh, Jesus, when Jesus came to earth 2,000 years, it was during that time, during the second temple. And, and the second temple was a great temple and, and uh, glorious. And the disciples were looking toward it and telling Jesus, look how great is this building. But Jesus said, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Jesus was prophesying here that this temple, the second temple, will be destroyed. And his prophecy was fulfilled in 70 AD. After around 40 years of the death of Jesus, the temple was destroyed. The Romans came and uh, inv invaded the, uh, Israel and they, they destroyed the temple. So this prophecy was already fulfilled. But let us go deeper. Let us continue. Let us see what, what Jesus also wanted to teach about. Verse 3. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives. That's why it's called the Olivet Discourse. This, this chapter, the teaching here. The disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? 
Amen. So here we see multiple questions. They're not only asking about the destruction of the temple, this second temple that they've seen. They're asking also about the sign of the end of the age and the sign of his coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ, because they knew that he would come back again. And Jesus, first four, let's continue. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Amen. So this is the first idea in, in his answer. So Jesus is telling them to be careful. Take heed. Take heed it means watch, be careful. That no one deceives you. Why is he saying that? Why did he start with this? Because he knew that there would be so much deceptions concerning this topic. Many people will be teaching different things that contradicts the words of the Bible. And many, even Christians, will be deceived concerning the end times. Mm -hmm. Satan will try to deceive even the elect. We'll see it later. This is what the Bible says. The chosen ones. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Study these things that no one may deceive you. For many will come in my name. They will come in the name of Jesus as servants of Jesus saying, I am the Christ. You see? Somebody representing Christ but he's a false Christ. And will deceive many. Mm -hmm. That's deception. Antichrist. But here he's speaking about many people. Many antichrists. But then there is the antichrist before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to speak about this deception and rep representing Jesus falsely. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14 to 15, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15, the Bible says, No wonder... For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. So Satan, when he comes to deceive people, he transforms himself as an angel of light. He comes to you as a servant of God, as a minister of righteousness. You know, but it's not the true light. Jesus is the true light. That's a false version of light. And also here the Bible says his ministers, which means his servants, transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. So those who will come to deceive the world, they will come as servants of righteousness. They're trying to bring good things. Love, peace, unity. They speak in the name of unity, prosperity. Oh, we're trying to unite the world. We're trying to, to bring love. We're trying to bring tolerance. You know, no hate. We are against hate speech. They speak into good things, but they are not from God. It's a false light, right? They, are, they transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, but they are actually the servants of the devil. Another place in the Bible, it says, I'm going to give you the where it says later after I read it. It says, who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the, is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever does, denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. That's 1 John chapter 2, 20 to, 22 to 23. So who is the Antichrist? Who is the liar? The one who denies the Son, 
Jesus Christ. He who denies the Son does not have the Father. That's what the Bible says in 1 John. He who denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you cannot say, oh, I worship God in heaven, the Creator, the Father. I believe Jesus is just a prophet. You know, or I believe Jesus is a good teacher, or Jesus is a good philosopher, or Jesus is a, is a good guru. But I, I worship the one God in heaven, the Creator. If you deny the Son, you don't have the Father in heaven, the Creator. If you have the Son, you have the Father in heaven. If you deny the Son, you don't have the Father. That's what the Bible says. So, but so interesting here. Who is denying the Son and claiming that has the Father? Other than the religion we know all about, right? The Islamic religion. Is it possible the Antichrist connected to this religion? Very much possible. Hallelujah. Let us continue reading. So Jesus first thing warned us against deception, against uh, uh, false prophets, false, false teachers, false Christs. And then he said in verse 6, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So Jesus prepared us. He told us that there will be many wars and rumors of wars. Don't be troubled. These things must come to pass. Don't be anxious or afraid. If somebody doesn't know about these things, maybe he believes in Jesus. He knew about Jesus. He believes in Jesus, but he never studied the scriptures. He doesn't go to church. And then he sees wars and rumors of wars and famines. He would say to himself, what is happening around the world? Uh, where is God? Why is this happening? I thought Jesus came to save the world and save us from, from sin. Right? They start questioning. If they are not educated and not informed, they will become troubled. Not knowing that these things must come to pass, must happen. God allowed it to happen. That's why we need to know about these things so that we are not troubled. It helps us. When we see these things happening, we know that Jesus already spoke about but let us remember that when we see wars, that's not the end. Throughout all history, for 2,000 years, we've seen many, many wars. You see these sometimes YouTube channels or every word that starts, oh, the end time, the end is here, Jesus Christ is coming. No, wars is not this sign of the end times. It's not this sign of Jesus coming. Throughout all history, we had wars and wars and rumors of wars, even famines and pestilences, which means pandemics. Pestilence. So even if we, if we see a pandemic, it doesn't mean this is the end or Jesus is coming right after it. These things must come to pass, but this is not the sign of his coming. This is what he said in verse 8. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. All of these things are just the beginning of sorrows. In another translation, it, can see, it says, the birth pangs. You know, when a woman uh, is about to give a child, there is birth pangs, pains of bear, uh, uh, giving, it, uh, giving birth, right? And it keeps increasing the pains. It keeps increasing until the moment of the deliverance of the birth, the birthing the child. And then once the woman sees the child, she forgets all, about all her pain. She's happy, she's joyful, she just want to hug her child. And Jesus is giving the same example here. He's saying that there are sorrows keep increasing like the birth pangs until the second coming of Jesus. And the moment you will see Jesus, we will forget about all the tribulations. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to compare some verses with Luke chapter 21 because this discourse, this teaching, is repeated in Mark chapter 13 and in Luke also chapter 21. But we have some different details. They don't contradict each other, they complete each other. Right? So they completely give us a bigger picture of what's going to happen in the future. So Luke 21, 9 says, But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass first, first, but the end 
will not come immediately. You see? So here, let us remember the word immediately, because we will see the word immediately later. And it's very important to understand this chapter. So after we, did, we see these things, the wars, the famines, the, the, everything, the end will not come immediately after it. Amen. Let's go back to Matthew 24. Verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Amen. Amen. So what is Jesus teaching here? He said, after you see all these things, after the beginning of sorrows, they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. Right? And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. So here we see the word tribulation. Right? We hear about the end times tribulation. What is the tribulation? And Jesus here, he's speaking to his disciples. He's speaking to Christians. He's not giving a sermon to the Jews, the unbelievers. He said that they will hate you. Why? For my name's sake. This is what it says in verse 9. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Do the Jews believe in Jesus? No, they don't believe in him right now. Lord willing, in the future. But right now, they don't believe in him. The Bible says in, in Romans chapter 11, they are enemies according to the gospel, but they are beloved according to the election. So, I don't want to confuse you with these things. But here we see a tribulation toward those who believe in Jesus for his name's sake they will, they will be hated by all nations and they will be killed so what is the tribulation? the tribulation is persecution that's the tribulation is the wrath of Satan on the believers throughout all history believers were persecuted but it will be so intensified, intensified in the end times the tribulation is not the wrath of God upon the earth. We are not appointed to wrath. Jesus will save us from the wrath of God. But Jesus promised us persecution in this world. The Bible says that anyone who is in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Jesus said in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Be of good courage for I have overcame the world. So this concept of oh no we will escape the tribulation the tribulation is not for Christians the tribulation is the, is for the Jews I don't see it in the Bible actually I see the opposite Amen? Amen Amen So this is the tribulation and then later we will see the great tribulation mm -hmm. Jesus will speak about it later Verse 10 he said then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another so when persecution comes, offense comes, falling away from the faith, stumbling. Many people will be offended in their faith and will stumble and leave the faith. Why? For many reasons. Maybe their faith is not genuine. Maybe they love the world more than Jesus. Or maybe they were deceived and thought by believing in Jesus, all they are going to experience in this world is prosperity, happiness, health, and wealth. And then these things are coming. Where is Jesus? What's going on? They told me that I'm going to be raptured before uh, I'm going to be persecuted. Why? Why all of these things happening? So they will stumble and fall away from the faith. Many will be offended. And when you get offended, because persecution is coming, then you don't want to die. You don't want to be killed for Jesus' name's sake. So you deny the faith and you go with the Antichrist. You go with them. But then your brother in the church who believes and doesn't want to deny will be betrayed by you. 
you will go because you're not believing. Somebody is not believing. I don't want to say you because I believe here everybody will persevere to the end. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But those who will not believe will betray us and say, oh, you know, this church, CFN, they are gathering in 3715, read go there. But I know that the Lord will protect us and lead us somewhere else. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So nobody will come here. In the name of Jesus. So many will be offended and will betray one another. And will hate one another. Then many false prophets rise up and deceive men. False prophets. They speak on behalf of God. Oh, they follow this man in Jerusalem, the Antichrist. Do this. Oh, this is not the mark of the beast. Just take it. It's good for the economy. Oh, God wants you to prosper. Look what's happening around the world. We're bringing the world into unity. We are the prophets of God. Listen to us. Many false prophets will rise to deceive the world, and many will be deceived. And because lawlessness will abound, all these people are living in sin and about the love of many will grow cold. No more love. Betrayal, envy, jealousy, hate, killing, persecution. The love of many will, be, will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. God, it's so important to persevere in the faith. You believed in Jesus, you got to keep the faith until the end. Amen. Jesus said, he who denies me before men, I will deny him before the Father. But he who confess me before men, I will confess him before the Father. Amen. He who is ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of him before my Father. These are the words of Jesus. That's why we cannot deny him. We cannot say, oh, I believe in, in him in my heart. And when they come to kill me, I will just deny him with my mouth. But in my heart, I believe in him. You cannot do that. If you believe, then you testify. Amen. That's your faith. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Amen. And so confession with the mouth and believe in the heart, both come together. Amen. Verse 14, he said, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come yeah. after the gospel is preached to all the world as a witness to all the nations then the end will come so Jesus wants his gospel to reach out to all the world and today we are living in a time where this is almost this is being fulfilled is almost fulfilled with social media, with all of these things, and, and the, 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 the Bible is being translated to many, many languages, the gospel has almost reached everyone, all nations in this world. Maybe it has, has already reached, that's why we are uh, so close to the end. Because Jesus said the gospel will be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Amen. Amen. In Luke 21, 12 and 15, Jesus gave us more details. He said when they will deliver you to persecution, verse 12, he said, in Luke 21, he said, before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. That's verse 12, Luke 21, verse 12. You can keep your hand on 20, uh, Luke 21, so we, because we will keep going back and forth. He said, before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Amen. Amen. So let us not worry about testifying about Jesus in the end time. He will give us a mouth and a wisdom that no one can come against. Amen. Hallelujah. It will shut, shut down the mouth of the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. It will give us a wisdom that is supernatural. Amen. So we saw the beginning of sorrows. We saw rumors of wars and rumors. <coughs> then pestilences, all of these things. <coughs> Actually, if you go into details, um, if you study Revelation chapter 6, it's crazy, it's about the seven trumpets, 
And it's exactly the same order of 1924. First trumpet war, and then famine, pestilence, death, death, social, and then persecution. Mm -hmm. He saw a vision of the soul of all the martyrs, the souls of all the martyrs under the altar, waiting for, for the judgment to come. And he said, you have to wait a bit more because the, your, the number of your fellow brothers has not been fulfilled yet. But we're not going to study today uh, Revelation chapter 6. But all of these things are called the beginning of sorrows. They will come one after the other. I said that wars happen all throughout history. But it will intensify, it will happen more often at the end, right before the revelation of the Antichrist, the, the, the appearance of the Antichrist. We will see a big war happening around the world, and because of war, there are consequences, right? What happens when there is a worldwide war? There is a famine, and when there is a famine, you're, you're not well nourished. Mm -hmm. There is pandemics, there is sickness, and when there is famine, sickness, and wars, there is death. And then after that, there will be the persecution. So it's the same order, it's just a side note. And now we saw these two things, the beginning of sorrows, and then persecution, which is, Jesus called it tribulation, and now we will see the great tribulation. Matthew 24, going back to Matthew 24, verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who, let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Mm -hmm. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nur nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. For then there will be great tribulation. See here the word great tribulation. Then there will be great tribulation such as has not been seen. Since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days would be shortened. <coughs> Amen. Amen. So what is the sign of the great tribulation? It's in verse 15. He said, when you see the abomination of desolation. There is an abomination, an, ab an ab abominable act that will happen that will bring desolation. Desolation means destruction. Where will it happen? In the holy place. The holy place is the temple. But the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. Right? What is he speaking about here? Where is Jesus speaking about the, the events that will happen in 70 AD? How the temple will be destroyed and when you see the abomination of the desolation, the, the Romans entering Jerusalem and coming into the temple and then you should flee out, uh, leave Judea, right? He said, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So in Judea is the, the area of, of Jerusalem. Flee to the mountains to hide because great destruction will come. What was he speaking about? Actually, this is where the double fulfillment prophecy works or happens, or the dual fulfillment prophecy. He was speaking about both. I believe he was preparing them through his words for what's going to happen in 70 AD. But later we will see a hint after a few verses that this will apply also about another event in the end times. In the end times. So, and uh, in, in Luke 21, 20, he gave another detail to prepare them. He didn't speak about the abomination of desolation. In Luke, uh, in Luke, twen uh, in Luke 20, 1, 20, he didn't speak about the abomination of desolation. In Luke 21, 20, 
He said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. When you see it surrounded by armies, know that it will be destroyed very soon. I was studying, a, I was reading a book that speaks about history, and that's crazy what happened. You know, in 70 AD, the Romans came to Jerusalem because of some kind of uh, rebellions and things, and they surrounded the city in 70 AD, the Romans. And they said to the Jews, if you surrender to us, we will, if you surrender and give up and you allow us to rule and don't rebel, we will not destroy anything. We will not destroy the temple. We will keep it, but we will keep ruling over it. But if you don't surrender, we will come inside and we will destroy everything and kill everything. The Jews, back in the day, those who didn't believe in Jesus, had prophets, and their prophets were saying, Oh, never surrender! God will protect us! God will deliver us! Never surrender! We want to have our own country, our own government. We hate the Romans. We're not going to allow them to enter this country. But the Christians who knew the words of Jesus, fled to the mountains. That's what happened in 70 AD. All the Christians went, I forgot the name of the city, even history knows which city they went to. And then, then what happened? The Jews, because they didn't surrender, all the Romans entered, and they killed everyone, almost everyone, and they destroyed the temple, they destroyed the city, and we no longer have the second temple. It, it became a ruin. These prophets were not speaking from, by, from God. They were giving false hope to the people. The Jews were not in the will of God because they rejected their Messiah. Mm -hmm. they, killed, they killed Jesus. And judgment came upon them and they got destroyed. Their temple was destroyed, their nation was destroyed, and they were led captives into all the nations. And they were dispersed, they, they went into all the world. That's what happened in history. But the Christians fled to the mountains. And Jesus told them that you have to go there as fast as possible, right? Don't even go to the... If you are on the housetop, don't go down to take anything from your house. If you are in the field, don't go back to get your clothes. F flee to the mountains. Hide, because there will be a judgment. God will judge his people. And then he spoke about the, the nursing babies and those who are nursing babies and the pregnant because it's such a time of, of hardship and tribulation, right? And pray that your flight might not be in winter or Sabbath. Winter because of the cold, Sabbath because there were laws. You're not allowed to travel on Sabbath. They will stop you. This is what the Jews believe. Verse 21, for then there will be great tribulation such as has never being since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh should be, should, would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. B. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Verse 29, Matthew 24, that's very important. This will give us the hint that it's a dual fulfillment prophecy. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall. The, star, the stars will fall from heaven. And the powers of heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from full, the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. 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 I read to you many verses, but we will explain them.
Do you see what he said in verse 29? Immediately after the great tribulation, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and then you will see the sign of the Son of Man appearing in heaven, and he will send his angel. Did these things happen in 70 AD? Did Jesus come in 70 AD? No. Was the sun darkened, the, the, the stars from heaven fell, no. and, and the... The, uh, the Jesus sent his angels to gather the elect, which is a picture of the, the rapture. It didn't happen. So that's the power of God here we see. How these words, part of it, can apply to a short, short term prophecy that was fulfilled in 70 AD. But he was speaking about something that will happen in the end, right before his coming. And it's crazy, for almost 2,000 years, there was no nation of of Israel, they were dispersed all over the world, and suddenly now they came back to their land. And there are many prophecies that God will bring his people back to their land. Mm. And now they, they, they have Jerusalem again, their, their capital, and now they want to build the third temple. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to build the, the holy place, the third temple. And what did Jesus say in verse 15? When you see the abomination of desolation, stand, spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. So there will, something will happen, another abomination in Jerusalem, in the third temple, right before the second coming of Jesus Christ. And today, we are living in times that are so close to these things. Many of these prophecies are coming to pass again before our eyes. You see, and now we're seeing nation, we are seeing nations trying to come against Israel. When you see Israel surrounded by armies to destroy these nations. But you know what will happen? The Antichrist, according to the prophecy of Daniel, will do, will make a peace treaty with Israel for seven years. That's Daniel 9, 26 and 27. You can go there and read it. He will do a peace treaty with them, but he will break it in the middle after three years and a half. He will break this peace treaty and he will set up the abomination of desolation and he will come against, against them. Where is it? Daniel 9, 26. Let's go there. Daniel 9. Six. These things, man, it can take us hours and hours to study. I'm just trying to summarize all these end times prophecies in this teaching. Maybe we'll have more teachings about this. About the book of Revelation, of Daniel. Verse 26, Daniel 9. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. That's a prophecy about the death, death of Jesus. You know, 62 weeks, each week here represents seven years. Each day represents a year in this prophecy. And 62 weeks, he said, after 62 weeks, Messiah shall cut off. And if you do the year's calculation, between the time that Daniel spoke this prophecy to the coming of Jesus, it was exactly the same amount of years. Around 490 years, I think. And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, not for himself. So first he's speaking about the redemption. Jesus will die for his people. And the people of the prince who is to come, there is another prince that will come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. Until the end of the world, desolation shall be determined. Then shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. So this prince, which we believe is the Antichrist, will do a covenant, a peace treaty, with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to, the sacri to sacrifice and offering. And the, on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolation. That's the prophecy of the abomination of desolation. He will do an abomination. In its, so in the temple of God, people should... Worship God, right? There is the Holy of Holies. But to make uh, an abomination there, uh, how, how is it called? 
to, to do something that will dishonor God, desecration, mm. to do that, you're going to bring a false God or an idol or do something that is against God, right? And these things happen in the past throughout history. Roman emperors or, or pagan emperors, they came to the temple and they put the idol of Zeus or they made them a, a filthy sacrifice, a big sacrifice in the temple of God, not according to the will of God, to dishonor the God of Israel. And the Antichrist will do something so dishonorable there in the temple, in the third temple that we built. And I believe, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which we studied last Saturday, it's he himself will sit in the temple of God, making himself as God, and ask everybody to worship him. You see, that's such an abomination. You see how all of these things are connected? 2 Timothy, Matthew 24, Revelation 13, all of these things, Daniel 9, it's all connected. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Amen. So let's go back to Matthew 24. It's getting hot here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So we spoke about the great tribulation. And then Jesus said that these days will be shortened. Praise the Lord. If this great tribulation will last long, no flesh will survive. We'll go through so much suffering. But it will be so shortened. The Lord said. Verse 23, going back to Matthew 24. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. There will be so much deception. And people will believe that this person, the Antichrist, is truly the Christ. And they will start following him. Why? Because Jesus said he will do signs and wonders. Great signs and wonders. Verse 24. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. If they say to you, look, he's in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. So when people start, oh, that's Jesus, oh, the Christ came, he's, look, he's doing these great signs and wonders. Revelation chapter 3, or chapter 13 even, it, it says one of the signs that he will show, he will have a very big wound that he will look like, like dead. dead. People will think that he died, but then he will be healed and rise again, similar to Jesus' death and resurrection. And all the world, the Bible says, will marvel and follow him. You see how much the deception will be intense? That's why studying the end times prophecies matter. It's important to study these things. If Jesus spoke about these things, then they are important. Some people, to avoid debate, debates and controversy, they don't want to uh, speak about these things. They say, oh, like, there are many theories about the end times. Let us just focus on love or preaching the gospel. Amen. These are the most important things, the gospel and love. But if Jesus spoke about the end time prophecies, then we should study it. We should be prepared. Amen. 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 Not to be deceived. Verse 27, for as the lightning, so after he said, spoke about the false Christ and false prophets, he said in verse 27, for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. What does this mean? It means Jesus will come like lightning. Is that when the lightning flashes, is it hidden or like, is it the lightning or not? Did you see? Everybody sees the lightning, right? If you're outside. It's obvious. This is what Jesus said. When I will come, it will be like the lightning. It will flash from the east to the west. Everybody will see me. So don't follow these people who will tell you, oh, Jesus is in China. Jesus is in Jerusalem. Jesus came. He's in the desert now. He's praying. Or he's, you know, he will come like the lightning. Right? So it's so simple for those who know. You know. Don't follow anyone until Jesus comes with great glory. Amen. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. He will, say, he will see it later. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will, be, will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 28. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. That's a strong uh, uh, parabolic language or, or a picture to give. You know, when there is a carcass, a dead animal, all the eagles come toward it to eat. 
And this can might might mean two things here. It can mean the when these things will happen in Jerusalem, the judgment of God will come upon it. But I don't believe this is the meaning of it. I believe it's speaking here that according to the context of the verse before it about the coming of Jesus. So when there's a dead animal, all the eagles come to get it. Or the, yeah, the eagles. When Jesus will come, we will all be gathered to, together with him. This, this, it, might mean, it might mean this. And then verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days... So right after the great tribulation, right after the tribulation, the time of persecution, the, the, the abomination of desolation, all of these things, the deception, what will happen? The sun will be darkened. The moon will not give its light. And in another passage, it describes it more in details. It says that the moon will turn into blood, will look like blood. So it doesn't contradict itself. It, it's not going to give its light. It will turn into blood. That's in, Revel in Revelation chapter 6. The stars will fall from heaven. Many stars will fall from heaven. You know, how do they call it um, when a star falls? Shooting from? star? Yeah, shooting stars or something like that. Mm -hmm. Fire will come from heaven, destruction. And if you study the seven trumpets, it's all stars falling from heaven. Mm -hmm. But it's not our study tonight. And the powers of heaven will be shaken. And in Luke, it says the hearts of many will, fear, will fail because of fear of what can happen in the earth. It will come to them like a snare. So these signs will start appearing. So one of the signs of the coming of Jesus in, is when we see these cosmic disturbances. The, the, the heavens are being shaken. The, the sun is not giving its light. It's darkened. The stars are falling. This is one of the most important signs of the coming of Jesus Christ. Verse 30. Then this sign, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great, great glory. Hallelujah. That's the second coming of Jesus. So the greatest sign is Jesus himself coming on the clouds yeah. with great glory. That's the sign. You know? The ev all the tribes of the earth will start crying and mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. The second coming of Jesus, he will come like a king. He will come with great power. The first coming of Jesus, he came like a baby, a suffering servant. He served and he died on the cross for us. But the second coming, he will not come like a baby. He will come like a mighty king to bring judgment and to, to establish his kingdom. For us to reign with him. Amen. Amen. Jesus will be coming with great glory. And I, one time I read this online. So the Jews in 2,000 years ago were expecting a king to come. But a baby ended up came, coming. And a suffering servant who did, to die for them on the cross. And they missed him. Today, people are expecting a lovey-dovey Jesus. Jesus, my friend, a baby. You know, you know, for example, the Catholics or the pictures of Jesus with Mary is the infant baby, or Jesus, all oh, love, love. But he's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. He's coming to bring judgment and righteousness. He's coming in his holy glory. They should know this side of Jesus too. You know, many times we study just the side of, of Jesus dying for us, but we need to know that Jesus is the judge of the universe. He's holy, and he wants us to be righteous like him. Amen? Amen. Verse 31. And he will send these angels. So when Jesus will come, he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the, end, to the other. Four winds or from all the corners of the earth, all the places. What will he do? He will send these angels with a great trumpet to gather people. 
This is the picture of what? Gathering people to himself. It's clear. It's the rapture. So it will happen after the coming of Jesus, according to the context of Matthew 24. He will send these angels. And you know, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, when he speaks about the rapture, what did he say? At the sound of a trumpet, the twinkling of an eye will be all transformed like a twinkling of an eye. Be gathered together with him, and we will meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It's always there is a sound. There is a trumpet before these big events will happen. Hallelujah. Verse 32 to 35. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Amen. Amen. So they used to know that summer is near by looking to the fig tree. When it starts budding or, or uh, it's uh, it become tender and it gives leaves, they know that summer is near. They used to read, to read the signs to know that the season is coming. And he's telling us when you see all these signs, know that my coming is near. It's so similar. And I heard somebody explaining this in an interesting way. He said the fig tree symbolizes the nation of Israel. When you see the fig tree is budding, started growing again, coming back together, giving leaves, they know that the end is near. What happened after 2,000 years? The nation of Israel coming back. They came together. It's like budding. Hallelujah. Know that everything is at the door. And then he said, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. This generation. Here it means that all these things will happen in one generation. It's not going to take 2,000 years or the, the interpretation of these prophecies. Is, is that um, throughout all history, it, me it means that everything will happen in one generation. And this generation of the tribulation will not pass away until everything is fulfilled. Right? And also some people interpret it that this generation can mean this race. And the race is speaking about the, the nation of Israel will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So the Jews will never pass away until all these things are fulfilled. You know, some people, they say, oh, the Jews got destroyed in 70 AD. The, ch the church replaced the Jewish nation. There is no more Jewish nation. We are the church. It's not true. According to Romans 11, 11 God still, ha still has a plan for his people. He did not reject his people. He wants to save his people. And the Bible says all Israel will be saved in Romans 11. But we'll keep this for another study. Hallelujah. Amen. We're almost finished. Verse 36. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. So I'm going to stop a bit on a few verses that are controversial here. So no one knows the day and the hour. Amen. And when we start speaking about these things, people like to come to us sometimes to me and they tell me, oh, like, no one knows the day and the hour. You might be wrong. No one knows. Yes, it's true. No one knows the day and the hour. But Jesus said we should discern the season. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we don't know exactly which day. I'm not going to start giving you dates and, and specific hours when Jesus will come. Jesus said no one knows the day and the hour. But we have to discern the season. And we are seeing the signs. The signs are all around us. Amen. But my father only, Jesus, while he was incarnated on earth in his flesh, he, 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 he said that because he, took, he was an example as a human servant, he didn't have this. But Jesus, I believe, knows everything in his glorified form or body. Verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. B. For as in the days of the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, 
until the, until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be, or, or so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. That's such a powerful example, the day of Noah. You know, the flood. Noah kept warning the people. The Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. And people didn't listen to Noah. There is a flood coming. The flood symbolizes the judgment. There is a judgment coming. There is a flood coming. People didn't care. They kept doing business, marrying, doing their own thing, eating. Eating and drinking here means like they're celebrating, partying, having fun. Nothing bad will happen. And then suddenly the flood came upon them when Noah entered the ark. Noah wasn't taken out of the earth when the judgment came. He was still, he, he still went through the flood, but God was with him, God protected him through the ark. And today the ark is Jesus, Amen. who will protect us from the judgment of God that is coming to the world. Amen. Enter into Jesus and you will be saved from Amen. all the judgments. Verse, verse uh, 13 then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know that hour. Your Lord is coming. Amen. Watch therefore. But you know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Mm -hmm. You see, we need always to be ready for these things, to remember these things. Because if we allow just some spiritual sleepness or allowed, us, allowed ourselves to be distracted a bit in the world and the things of the world and the Partying and the smoke and all of these things, the coming of the Lord will come, the coming of Jesus Christ will be like a thief. Suddenly you will come, oh man, I'm not ready. What happened? You will be surprised. So you need to be always watchful in prayer. You need always to be ready because he will come as a thief in the night. Amen. Verse 45. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom he serve, his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming, and he begins to beat he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him into two, in two and appoint him, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hallelujah. So Jesus gave this parable about the faithful servant and the evil servant. Jesus left us. And he gave us a ministry to do, each one of us. And here, the example he gave to feed others. And we have the word of God today. And we can feed others with the word of God. We can feed them spiritually. By sharing the gospel, teaching the word of God. But if we say, oh, Jesus will delay, delay his coming. Let us have some fun right now. And begin be begin to eat and drink and enjoy the things of this world, Jesus sees this man as an evil servant and he will receive judgment when the Lord will come. So while we're waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ, you need to be occupied. You need to be busy. Are you still with me? Yes. yes. Amen. Yeah, bear with me, we're almost finished, hallelujah. So we need to take care of the business of our Father. We cannot say, oh, Jesus is coming, the world will end, and become idle, and sit around and do nothing. We gotta be busy. 
doing the will of the Father, right? Like Jesus did do the will of the Father, spiritually and physically. Working hard, the Bible commands us to work hard, to provide for our needs and the, those around us, to grow and influence those around us, to preach the gospel, and to, 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 to serve each other. And I'll grow idle and start singing and, and looking to the sky, and where is the sign of the coming of Jesus? <laughs> Occupy yourself while you are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I will close with this verse. Two verses. Luke 21 20. Luke 21 20. I will read it again. I will read it again. When you see Jerusalem, surrounded, see Jerusalem by armies, surrounded by armies, then now they know. They know. It's the solution is near. The solution Forgive me, I think I made a mistake. Me, I think I made a mistake. Hallelujah. Luke 21. Jesus said. In verse 28, now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Amen. Hallelujah. When we start seeing these things, we need to lift up our heads. Amen. Not to be ashamed, afraid. You know, when somebody is in depressed and afraid and anxious, is like walking like that. No, lift up your head. Be proud in your Lord. Be strong Amen. because you, your redemption is drawing near. Amen. Jesus is near. Hallelujah. God revealed to us all of these things. Because in, in Isaiah 46, 10, the Lord said, I declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Amen. The Lord says, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Everything that was spoken today in this prophecy will come to, to happen. Mm -hmm. I believe it with all my heart. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us have some time in prayer. Let's close our eyes and thank the Lord.